All right, everybody, you are not experiencing Groundhog Day. This is part two with the wonderful Joanne Yowitz, our resident expert on this. She's actually a career coach. And we wanted to talk with her because, of course, there's sort of a new world order brewing out there, right? What I call the COVID times. And then there's, I was going to be a new world order PC post COVID. So thank you very much for showing up, Joanne. I love your flowers back there. Very, very nice pot. You know, they're saying that more and more people are watching people's environments now, right? Behind them when they're doing these Zoom meetings, which is why now I have a, uh, the thing that I bleed, which is coffee. How you been? Pretty good, thank you. Excellent, very, very good. So here we are in the Zoom era. So I'm thinking that a lot of people who are looking for work are probably interviewing via Zoom. So my question is very simple. How do you best show up for this? Not only how you dress, but how you speak and how you maybe present your resume. Do, do we want to share a resume? right on Zoom and kind of reference it? What are the best practices? Great question, Ed. Thanks again for inviting me. Just a, a little bit of detail about the flowers. I've been doing Zoom for decades with my clients who are not in the Bay Area, who are geographically distant. Those are peonies. Peonies are some of my favorite flowers and they're silk flowers that I bought at the flower market in San Francisco. People ah, might want to think about that like later on. From here, anyway. They're beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. People and now might want to think I have about enhanced my book. flower knowledge. Thank you for that, too. The flowers are not an accident. This is my office where I work. As you see, there's no papers on the desk behind me. A Zoom call or a Zoom interview, whether it's with your first contact or with your potential hiring manager, it's really important to take it seriously and think about it as a real interview. As I say very often, you only have one chance to make a first impression. If your first impression is phone, Zoom, whatever, show up as your best self. That means your mental attitude, be upbeat, be excited, show your enthusiasm. It's also how you dress and your facial expressions. Even if your potential work environment is very casual, I always suggest to my clients that they dress at least one notch better. An interview is different than showing up in a workplace where a t-shirt and blue jeans are acceptable. It's going to affect how you act, your body language, and your behavior, it's also going to project a positive image to the person who's interviewing you. So wear something that you feel really great in, that's a great color, that's comfortable. And show affect. Smile. Be a personality. There's no need to be a robot. Yeah, I love, I love how a couple of things. Uh, I, I love how you really pinpointed the fact that how you dress really affects you as well. It's not just the perception of the person on the other side, but it's also your own perception of yourself. Because I know when I wear a suit, I kind of feel a little bit more important. I feel a little more polished. I, even my diction changes uh, depending on the way I dress, right? So those are very, very good, uh, good little tips. Do you, what, what, how many interviews do you think a person should do via Zoom in any given day? Let's say they have 20 employers that they're targeting. How many should they do in any given day just to, to stay positive and not feel run down by that process? I'm sorry, I missed one of the words. You said something about 20. Did you say how many interviews? Yeah, how many interviews should a, a candidate do in any given day? Let's say they have 20 employers that they're targeting. How many interviews should they schedule in any given day so that they don't feel interview fatigue? Really good question. It depends on the individual. Personally, if it was myself, I would want two, maybe three. It might be a stretch per day. Each interview, it takes 
mental energy. Even if some of the questions are the same, there's an element of performance, whether it's virtual via Zoom or in person. Yeah, I agree. And you want to get psychologically up for it. So if I were going to do two a day, I would have one in the morning. For me, I'm not a super, super morning person, so maybe I'd have it at 10 o'clock. And then one perhaps in the afternoon. But I would also be careful what I had for lunch, so I would, what, didn't feel super tired after a heavy lunch. And so you have the energy to be present, answer the questions, show up like you're really interested in what's going on, you're engaged in a lively dialogue. Then if you have a second interview that day, you might reflect on some of the answers that you gave. Okay, what were some great word point. choices or phrases that you thought, wow, I really, I nailed it there. That was a great word phrase. Maybe I want to use it again. Or you stumbled on a question and think about for your second interview or your third of the day, how you want to improve that. And I want to uh, tag on another bit of to the answer that you didn't ask. Very often, when people are anticipating a job interview, they can become really nervous because they're afraid that the hiring manager is going to potentially find out one of their deep skeletons in their closet. It could be an example of maybe you were laid off, maybe you were fired, maybe there was a time, a year and a half, where you were out of work. And that can create a lot of anxiety. And you don't want that to cloud your energy for the whole interview. A way to deal with that head on is to work with a coach for how to answer the question. Absent that, think about, okay, they're going to say, what were you doing from 2015 to 2017? You know, why is there nothing on your resume? You need to have a good answer. That doesn't mean be defensive, be as honest as you can, but have an answer so that when they, when and if they ask you the question, you're not going to feel like you're a deer in the headlights. That's not going to be a source of anxiety for you throughout the entire interview. Yeah, I love that. So in summary here is number one, watch what you eat before you do an interview. Because it's true, some, some foods weigh heavier. Two, know thyself, know what your tolerance is, right? Three is make sure that you show up super positive, you know, to all the meetings. And that's going to dictate how many meetings you do a day. And the other great one that you mentioned that I really love is analyze the previous interview and find out what were the areas that you really nailed and what were some of the things that maybe you need to work on and use that as a springboard. So on that note, how do people get a hold of you so that they can talk a little bit of personalized attention from you? As you might imagine, as a career coach, I'm helping people present themselves favorably, whether it's their resume or an interview and their online presence. Related to interviews, I think it's really essential to, to think about who am I? What is the package I am as a candidate? What value am I bringing to the potential employer? That's the bottom line. The employer's going to hire you because you're an expert in such and such, and you can help move this project forward, or you can bring in sales, whatever it is. They're not hiring you because they feel sorry for you. So when you think about your resume and the interview questions, you want to point out, it's not just, let me tell you, I had this job, this job, this job, this is what I did. It's the accomplishments. And what are those accomplishments? They can be tangible and intangible. It could be how you completed a project two months early and that saved a certain amount of money. Or you exceeded your goal in sales. Or you wrote something that made the standard operating procedures of the organization become much smoother, which ultimately saved the manufacturing costs. Think about your value and make sure that 
you have the opportunity to share that with the potential employer. Great advice. So how do people get a hold of you, Joanne? I'm sorry, I lost you. How do people get a hold of you? They, I should give you my card. Um, my email is Joanne Yowitz at iCloud.com. Let me spell it. It's J O A N N E Y A W I T Z at iCloud.com. Or you can call me 415 342 3023. Excellent. All right. Take the time. Make sure you call her because she is a wealth of information. We're just scratching the surface. Thank you so much, Joanne. Have a great day. Make sure, make sure to stay healthy and stay indoors. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. You bet.